Master Tavern Keeper's History of the Old World. And so, finally, here we are, on the eve of the Battle of Runcenane Castle. Aye, but it's worth saying that it was neither a traditional battle, nor even a siege, as all the fighting occurred within the castle walls, thanks to the aid of the treemen and the treekin of Clinty's Wood, whose march to the castle had massed the advance of the forces of the Alliance against Macbeth. Ah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so what was this castle like then? When you say castle, it conjures up images of the towering stone wall structures of my homeland, Nordland. But uh, perhaps the castles of Albion are not so similar. Ah, oh, well, I've not seen any of the castles of the Emperor myself, so I can't say if it resembles them or not. But uh, as to Macdeath's castle, it stood upon an ancient man-made mound up in the mountains that had once been an old Albionite hill fort. The castle itself was uh, very impressive, well, at least for Albion, although uh, anything larger than a big tent is an impressive structure in my motherland. The main part of it was a large stone keep that held the throne room, Macdeath and Lady Macdeath's chambers, a feasting hall and kitchens, in addition to uh, jail cells below and the torture chamber. The facade of the castle was dominated by the uh, two-storey main gate that sat over the dormitory for the castle guard and a tall watchtower known as the Martin Tower which protected the treasure chamber set in its foundations. These were linked by a curtain wall around the main courtyard and presided over by a tall tower that was the sole domain of the king himself. Oh, my goodness. I had not expected such an, uh, ah, as you said, impressive structure to uh, exist in Albion. From what you've told us, it sounds like the rest of the island lives in uh, caves and uh, tents. <laughs> oh, well, I wasn't joking. We do. This story is set a few centuries ago, though, and there were castles back then. And not just in East Albion. For example, up the north lay the even older Castle Eldor, seat of the old royal family of the north, the old Flins, and the site of the infamous labyrinth known as the Web of Eldor. Of course, both this and all the castles of East Albion are in ruins now, either sunken into the bogs, destroyed by storms of magic, or swallowed up by the malignant wild woods. It's much safer in the caves, to be honest. I can tell you, such things as uh, castles are not meant for Albion, and they never last long. Anyhow, shall we begin? Now, the killing actually started the evening before the forces of the Alliance even arrived at the castle. Conspirators in Macdeath's court had sent word to uh, Prince Donalbane that the main gate would be unbolted and open when he arrived, but uh, things did not go to plan. is empty. Our timing I cannot fault. What the f- It's the beast of Lady Macbeth. It is that damn spot. Aye, but he's not alone. For behind it, Banco and the guards and we are caught. And what are you two doing by the main gate there, Jimmys? And so the collaborators were caught and brought before Macdeath, once more confirming his fears and vindicating his paranoia. My king, my fiend, I caught these two Jimmys by the main gate. 
talking about? Opening it? Ugh. Banquo, my friend. Twas his thought, but less horrible than I feared. Give them the end that their treachery had bought, and cut each one neck and beard. All right, Jimmies. Lennox, Satan, the time has come to give you two a time. And so the heads of Donald Bain's spies found their way onto a pair of spikes over the battlements of the castle, and the main gate was very much bolted shut when the army of the Alliance arrived. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, what about Arkazagul's tunnel into the uh, cellars of the castle? Was that any more successful? Ach, it was indeed. Zargul led the seven surviving dwarves down into the secret entrance in the glade and then along the dark tunnel. Gnarled roots dangling like stalactites from its roof and their tendrils curling and twisting along the walls and floors. Accompanying them was Donald Bain, the heir who was but a hair's breadth away from the throne, if Macdeath would uh, but only die. He was now bearing the magical blade, the Malta's falchion, that he'd recovered from the distillery in Loch Lorm, in addition to his uh, own two-handed sword, and uh, its life-rejuvenating abilities filled him with confidence. Murgray the magician, too, still lived and lit his prince's way with a magical flame. The battle at Dungal Hill had left him bruised, battered and sore, but uh, still clinging to his mortal coil. Additionally, Sir John Quickshire and his squire, Sandra Pangle, Dart, the Earl of Harkness and his surviving uh, knights were also there at the uh, insistence of Donald Bain, it has to be said, but uh, much to the chagrin of Julia McEwman and Zargal. The last three members of the party were all McEwmans too. The towering bruiser Fergus, as I just mentioned, the clan Laird Julia, and her bodyguard, the well-travelled Hugo Yorickson. These four groups were a dangerous combination, for three of them had their eyes fixed upon the crown of East Albion. Donald Bain was the legitimate eldest son of the old king, Dunco. Julia was his illegitimate daughter, and Arcus Argyll wanted to do away with the blue-blooded despots altogether and take their place as the leader of a new kind of a country. Something here in Tilia we would call a republic, such as that of a Remus. Ah, now, that's a sentiment I can get behind. Off with their crown, heavy heads. The lot of them. Huzzah! Ah, oh, Master Tavernkeeper, please control your rebellious soul. Ha ha ha. Ah, sorry, gentlemen. Got a bit carried away there. Please, Cedric, continue. Ach, oh, no worries, my friend. It's thoroughly understandable, though, given your uh, experiences in the world of um, espionage. Ah! Oh. Septimus, ugh, you kicked me. Oh, did I, Cedric? My apologies. I hope that didn't break your train of thought and cause you to forget what you were about to divulge. Ugh, I, uh, I, I see, I see. Yes, yes, it's completely slipped my mind. Don't you worry about that. No worries there. Excellent. Well, as you've forgotten, let me remind you. I'm sure you were about to continue talking about Macdeath, weren't you? Ach, oh, yes, so I was. So I was. Oh, but uh, what about the world of Espion? No, Heinrich, that is not what you heard. The master alchemist here was actually referring to my love of the world of Thespians. And then he said, ah as I accidentally kicked him. My apologies once more, Cedric. I hope that clears everything up. Ach, no, it's fine. I think I know what's going on here. And I think that's uh, all that needs to be said on this subject at the moment. Anyhow, I think uh, it'll be best if I continue, eh? Ah, uh, yes, uh, by all means. That would be very much appreciated. And then perhaps you and I can uh, have a little chat. 
just the two of us, and I can uh, clarify a couple of things for you. Oh, yes. That too would be very much appreciated. Anyhow, perhaps I should uh, get back to uh, the party of Arkas Argyll underneath the castle of Ronsonane. Now, you see, each of the members of this uh, underground party had both a reason that they wanted to head directly to the cellars and also a reason that they wanted to be together. Donald Bain primarily wanted to rescue his younger brother, Charles, from the torture chamber located beneath the castle before ascending the keep to kill Macduff and take his crown. Zargul's tunnel was obviously the most direct route to that end. Julia McEwen, on the other hand, wished to get into the treasury, for within, she believed, lay the love letters sent by her mother to King Dunco, and it was these that would prove that she was his heir. After that, it was simply a case of securing her succession by killing Macbeth, and then killing her allies, the princes Donald Bain and Charles, and also, of course, anyone else who saw her do it. And then lastly, as I mentioned earlier, Arcas Argyll wanted to do away with all of them. But failing that, he'd be uh, equally satisfied by robbing the treasury of every last coin and jewel that lay within it. A penniless monarch is much less of a threat to the common man than a rich one, after all. Oh, my goodness, such potential infamy from each. There are no heroes here, are there? Ugh. Yes, and yet no. There was, of course, the knight errant, Quickshire, his squire, Sandra Pangle, Dart, and the knights of Harkness. They had no hidden agendas between them, and it was their presence that prevented everything turning to bloody murder from the offset in the tunnel. Anyhow, I think that uh, covers the eve of the fighting. Shall we uh, get ourselves onto the main event? <laughs> 